Right, and another sign that the coalition's sharpening their differences with Labor in key policy areas, Shadow Defence Minister Andrew Hastie has declared that if elected, a coalition government would set a deadline by the end of 2026 to massively build up Australia's meagre military stocks. Despite what Labor says, it's evident that China's becoming more bellicose in our region, not less, with growing warnings and a major conflict with China could erupt as early as 2027. Joining me now to discuss his plan and more from this area, Shadow Defence Minister Andrew Hastie. Well, Andrew, depending on when the election's held, we're talking about at most a couple of years here, what's your plan to build up our capability and our personnel in such a short time frame? Good evening, Peter. Well, the question we're asking is what can we fix by 2026? If you look at what's happened over the last two years in Ukraine and Israel, we can see that the character of warfare has changed. We're seeing mass and quantity. We're seeing lots of cheap, uh, produce, cheaply produced weapons on the battlefield, and that's changed the way people are fighting. Um, and one of the things that we're also seeing is that war is now attritional. We're basically seeing the US industrial base pitted against uh, the industrial bases of China, Russia and Iran. And we're seeing Israel and Ukraine running down their war stocks and being dependent on, on the US. And so what we need to do is invest in our industrial base, uh, back Australian defence industry, and we need to produce um, air defence, we need to produce uh, counter unmanned aerial systems, we need to produce uh, drones, electronic warfare capabilities, and also long range fires, which are just applicable in the Indo-Pacific as they are in the Middle East and the battlefields of Eastern Europe. I think most people at home would be listening to your comments about a homegrown defence industry as a no-brainer. I guess the challenge is, and you know this well, when defence procurement get involved, they make it too complicated, they shift out deadlines, they blow out the budget. In addition to what we can build and, and develop here in Australia, are you open, is the coalition open, open to buying off the shelf if we have to, to get the kit and, uh, and capability as quickly as we need? Of course, it's not a either or question, it's a both and. Of course, we need off the shelf capabilities and that's what we're doing with AUKUS. We're buying Virginia class submarines, uh, but we also need to back the Australian defence industry and we need to rebuild our industrial muscle. And we need to be able to produce things because we can't always rely upon the US and other allies to pr uh, produce our munitions and our weapon systems. Mm. And one thing we can do, with a, with a na we're a nation of 27 million people, uh, we can invest in these things and we can produce things um, because they're, they're cheap and they're mass produced. Uh, we can build asymmetric capabilities, which will give us an edge over the next three to four years and which will help build our mm. uh, self-reliance and our ability to, to survive in a conflict. You mentioned AUKUS there. I listened to the Deputy Prime Minister, the Defence Minister, Richard Barnes, today in question time. Pretty scathing about the coalition and AUKUS. Of course, the coalition are the ones who developed and signed AUKUS, but you wouldn't know it if you listen to Richard Miles. Let's have a listen. When we came to power, AUKUS was really not much more than a thought bubble. But since then, we have been turning it into a reality. Andrew Hastie, your response? I thought it was pretty childish. Uh, I think AUKUS is the most consequential thing the coalition government did in office. And it's a national endeavour, it's bipartisan, it's multi-generational, and it's got to be above cheap political point scoring, which is exactly what Richard Miles did in Parliament today. Uh, we need to be working together to make this thing happen. It's his job to implement it. And we give uh, the project bipartisan support. So instead of landing cheap blows in Parliament, he should be focused on the job and I can tell you there's a lot of work to be done, um, not just with the federal government, but also with the WA state government. And I called on them last week to establish an AUKUS minister in the state cabinet to get the thing rolling, because Labor have dropped the ball on AUKUS. Let's go to comments from the ASIO boss, uh, Mike Burgess, yesterday, that, that harbouring Hamas sympathies, he said, is not necessarily a deal breaker when it comes to getting an Australian visa. Have a listen. If they've expressed any support or sympathy for Hamas, is that a problem? Depends on the, uh, you know, what that looks like. If they're supportive because they want their homeland, if they're giving financial support or material aid, that can be a problem. And obviously we take each case on its merits in the context of the information we have before us.
But if it's just rhetorical support? If it's just rhetorical support and they don't have an ideology or support for a violent extremism ideology, then that's not a problem. If they have a support for that ideology, that will be a problem. Your colleague James Patterson doesn't agree at all. He says the only acceptable number of Hamas supporters in Australia is zero. The ASIO boss talked about security checks, but he made the admission that they only check those that are referred to them. And we know not many get referred on. You're one of the few politicians who's actually picked up a gun to fight terrorists, Andrew. What's your view on this? I've got a lot of respect for Mike Burgess, and he's a pretty straight shooter. But on, on this question, I, I disagree. I think uh, that if you sign up or support the Hamas charter, directly or indirectly, I don't see how you can't be supporting uh, violent, radical behaviour, the sort that we saw on October 7th last year. It's in the Hamas Charter. They are committed to the destruction of the Jewish people and the state of Israel. That's why they use the words from the river mm. to the sea. These people don't negotiate. So if we have people coming to Australia who support Hamas, all we're doing is, is, is inviting more radicalism into Australia, which will damage our social cohesion and, and potentially, uh, you know, lead to other consequences. I made a point earlier in the show, you know, Muslim countries in the region, neighbours of the Gaza area, Egypt, Jordan, obviously a little bit further along, Saudi Arabia, they refuse to take in anyone from Gaza. Why is this Australia's problem to fix from this great distance away? And the fact that these countries don't want anyone from Gaza, given the, the predominance of Hamas, that says something, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it does. And Hamas is a radical organisation committed to the destruction of Israel. So people who sign up to that or support that, uh, we, we have big problems with. If, if other Muslim countries have problems with that, then uh, we should be looking uh, very closely at this. And I think anyone who supports Hamas should not be allowed into Australia. It's as simple as that. It's a pretty straight line, which is why I support what Senator James Patterson said yesterday, or today, rather. We like, we, we like you for your clarity, Andrew Hastie. Thanks for your time.